Hello. So today we're going to have a look at the whole subject of altitude in terms of Microsoft Flight Simulator and flight simulation and aviation in general to explain some of the terms that get thrown around, which you'll probably have heard of, but may not have actually understood what they meant. So we're going to have a little look. We're going to be covering barometric pressure, so QFE and QNH, and the transition level and transition layer. Okay, so let's get started. Before we go anywhere, disclaimer, I'm not a real pilot, I'm not a qualified pilot at all, I'm not a tutor, I'm not a professor of aeronautics or any of those things, so this is all based on things I have learned along the way, which I've had other people ask me about, so I'm relaying the knowledge that I have gained for the benefit of others. Obviously you can go and do all of your own reading on these subjects. Okay, let's get started then. What is altitude? Altitude is how high your aircraft is in the sky, basically, and it is measured by the air pressure. So the altitude gauge in an aircraft, or altitude um, meter in an aircraft, measures air pressure. That's how it figures out how high you are in the sky. Okay, so the, the air pressure in the atmosphere is higher at low level and lower at high level. Yeah, so the, the higher you get in the sky, the less air there is. So the pressure is lower. Yeah. Eventually, about 70,000, 80,000 feet, most aircraft run out of air to use and will fall back down. Yeah. So that is their ceiling, the absolute ceiling for things like the, the, uh, the, uh, the U-2 or the SR-71 was up around the 70 to 80,000 feet mark. Most airliners fly at about 35,000, 37,000 feet. And the reason they fly in that region is because it's the cheapest and the fastest. It's the best blend of efficiency and speed. Yeah. So the higher you fly, the faster you can go. And engines run more efficiently in thin air. Therefore, it's more efficient to run and, and to fly quickly at a given altitude. And yeah, the, the kind of from 35 up to 40,000 feet is that kind of band where most of the airliners live. Okay. So QFE and QNH, you may have heard these terms. QFE means query field elevation. So if you are, it's like asking the question, what is the, uh, the barometric pressure in relation to the airfield? QNH is the query nautical height. So it really means what is my altitude or what is the barometric pressure that I can work out my altitude from above sea level? Yeah, so QFE is above the ground, basically. QNH is above the sea. Okay, so it stands to reason that QFE becomes useful for airfields, which is why it's called query field elevation. Whereas while you're en route, it's easier to think in terms of the globe as a, a perfect sphere, which the water almost makes it. Um, so, it, you know, for a, just a general altitude above the sphere of the Earth, even though the Earth isn't really a sphere, but anyway, we won't go into that. Um, it's useful for en route to give you a standard way of measuring in relation to everybody else. Okay, so altimeters and air pressure. Altimeters are calibrated to read the correct altitude at a given temperature and air pressure. So out of the factory, an altimeter is calibrated to measure the correct altitude at 65 Fahrenheit or 15 centigrade. And in terms of air pressure, 29.92 inches or 1013 hectopascals. So the inches and hectopascals, they're just two different scales of measuring air pressure or atmospheric pressure, I should say. So it's no different to, you know, Fahrenheit or centigrade. They're measuring the same thing. It's just two different scales. The important thing to understand about the air pressure and temperature is obviously they change. So depending on where you are, what the weather's like, the, the pressure and temperature will change and your altitude above sea level the temperature and pressure may well change and they may change from hour to hour and from location to location they will be different okay so it's worth thinking about that that your measuring of your altitude is going to change if you're just using the air pressure to measure it so you're going to have to continually calibrate your altimeter okay so let's go and actually take a look. I've got Flight Simulator running in the background, and we've got an altimeter here. 
which is a, a basic Cessna 172. So you can see on the altimeter there's a, a knob at the bottom left to calibrate it. Now if I press the B key on the keyboard, which you may have done in Flight Simulator, it has just calibrated the altimeter to the local barometric pressure. So this reflects the accurate height above sea level that I'm actually at right now. So if I had asked the ATIS from the, from the nearby airfield or for a, a, a METAR report or METAR report, they would have told me it's about 29.8 inches or 1012. No, sorry, this is the other way, isn't it? 1018, 1008, sorry, on the um, hectopascals. So let's see what happens though. So if we go and change this, even by a little bit, so we're just changing the calibration ever so slightly, and you can see we can actually move the needle quite a lot, you know, hundreds of feet without too much change. Why is this important? Let's come back to our slides and have a look. It is important because even with that small amount of change, you may think you are flying potentially at 11,000 feet. On a cold day, you could actually be at 10,000 feet. On a hot day, this is based on us not calibrating the altimeter, by the way. So on, on a hot day, we could actually be at 12,000 feet. Yeah, and it's not out of the realms of possibility that that could happen if we don't calibrate the altimeter. Therefore, two different aircraft that are supposed to be separated by 2,000 feet of altitude in the sky, as far as air traffic control are concerned, could actually be at the same altitude as each other if neither of them have calibrated their altimeter. Yeah, so if you have enough variance away from where you should be, you could hit each other. And it, you know, don't think of this just in terms of a clear sky and say, I would see them coming. What if you're both in thick cloud? And don't say it hasn't ever happened because it has happened. There's a, a nice saying I found while I was reading up on this. If you look down at the bottom of the screen there, high to low, look out below. It basically means if you are in a high temperature area and you, dr you descend into a, or you fly into a lower temperature area, look below you because you're actually going to be lower than you think you are yeah so if you if you go into a lower temperature area of airspace your altitude will be lower than it reads anyway transition altitude you probably heard about this one or you've seen it uh, certainly with um flying the big jets and pressing the buttons to switch over the um, the calibration of the altimeter between the, uh, a tuned in QNH calibration and what's called a standard calibration. So the standard barometric pressure to calibrate an altimeter is 29.92 inches or 1013 hectopascals, which you'll remember that was the kind of the basic factory setting of an altimeter. It is most correct at those pressures at a, at a given temperature. Okay, so what is a transition altitude? I found this very good description of it, which is better than I could w put words together. So in general, a transition altitude is chosen to be high enough that terrain is no longer a factor and because air traffic at that altitude is typically fast enough that repeatedly resetting the altimeter would be tedious. <laughs> so basically, a transition altitude is the point at which you stop bothering to tune in the QNH or the you stop bothering to calibrate the altimeter. Above the transition altitude, you tune to a standard set of numbers. So then everybody above that altitude in the airspace has their altimeters tuned the same as each other. So they all agree with each other in terms of the altitudes the aircraft are actually at. Yeah. So if you've all tuned in the same and you all say, I'm at 20,000 feet, the aircraft physically are at 20,000 feet, you know, in relation to each other. They may not be perfectly at 20,000 feet, but in relation to each other, they'll be at the same altitude as each other because they've both got their altimeters calibrated the same as each other.
Okay, so the transition altitude is chosen around the world. In across the whole of the United States, it's eighteen thousand feet, but throughout most of the rest of the world, it's either region or even airfield specific. It can be as low as three, four thousand feet in some places. But basically, below the transition altitude you calibrate the altimeter and above it you use a standard set of numbers to calibrate your altimeter. So you'll have heard the terms transition altitude, transition level and transition layer. The transition altitude is the point that is the, the point at which your aircraft crosses the transition altitude is the transition altitude so it will be advertised as the transition altitude yeah and that's the point at which you switch over to using the standard QNH the transition level is the first usable flight level after the transition altitude and it will be advised to you yeah it's typically the next 500 foot step above the transition altitude but it may not be depending on the weather so it may be that the the transition layer in the the gap between the two isn't big enough to allow for what i'm going to show you on the next slide because <laughs> if you imagine you go up through the transition altitude you need a second to recalibrate the altimeter and then the needles are going to move on your altimeter so you need that kind of buffer area which no aircraft will cruise within because there are people that are calibrating their altimeter within that layer so the transition layer is in between the point at which everybody switches over to standard QNH and the lowest level that people will be instructed to fly at above the transition altitude okay what is a level bust it is when you you deviate by more than 300 feet from the cleared flight level. So when you are flying above the transition altitude, you will be flying to a flight level, and they're named in hundreds of feet. So flight level 360 is 36,000 feet, for example. If you have not calibrated your altimeter, you could quite easily be flying at an altitude that's nowhere near 36,000 feet, as measured with a QNH of 2992. So therefore you will be called to have well you have will have performed a level bust and you could be called to account for it. And it's yeah it's typically caused by not switching to a standard QNH in a timely manner. So or not switching at all if you'd forgotten all about it. So typically you know you might get somebody coming up through 19 20,000 feet that hasn't done it in time and they might Therefore, say you are going to fly at flight level 200, which is just above the 18,000 feet where you might switch over in the US. But if you haven't changed your uh, QNH quickly enough, does that make sense? So you come up through that transition altitude, and then you're coming up to the top of the transition level, and you still haven't done it. And then you get to your cleared flight level and you still haven't done it, but because you haven't gone and calibrated your altimeter, you're nowhere near the actual flight level you should be at. You know, you could be 500 feet away from it. Okay, so that's all there is to it, really. So if we just go and whiz back through the slides a little way, we'll just have another look. So this is the real reason why calibrating the altimeter is so important and why there are you know, conventions in place to do it. You imagine zero visibility. These two aeroplanes haven't calibrated their altimeters. They both think they're at 11,000 feet. Or sorry, one of them thinks they're at 10,000 feet. The other one thinks they're at 12,000 feet. They're actually both at 11,000 feet because they're both wildly off on the calibration of their altimeters. Smash. They crash into each other. Yeah. So the other thing, the other takeaway from this is that transition altitude. Below it, you use the local barometric pressure. Above it, you use a standard barometric pressure. Okay? And you tune that in on the altimeter itself. It's worth pointing out these little windows on each side of the altimeter that show the uh, 
um, hectopascals or inches. They're called Colesman windows. I don't know the full story behind how they got that name. Obviously, it's the guy that invented it. But, um, yeah, so they're called Colesman, or I presume they're the guy that invented it. They're Colesman windows on an altimeter. And when you tune the, the, col the, the readings in the Colesman windows, you can see the needles changing. Okay, so that's it. That's everything I wanted to cover today about barometric pressure, QFE, QNH, trans transition levels and layers. Hopefully that's kind of lifted some of the fog if you knew nothing about them before. And so next time you jump in an aeroplane and you're having a fly around, you'll have a bit more appreciation of what it's actually all about. Okay, that's all today. <laughs>